Hi, CJ here. The story is told about Mr. Joe Wagner, who attended a junior stock show when a grand champion lamb owned by a little girl was being auctioned. As the bids reached $5 per pound, the little girl standing beside the lamb in the arena began to cry. At $10, the tears were streaming down her face and she clasped her arms tightly around the little lamb's neck. The higher the bids rose, the more she cried. Finally, a local businessman bought the lamb for more than $1,000, but then announced that he was donating it to the little girl. The crowd applauded and cheered. Months later, Mr. Wagner was judging some statewide essays when he came across one from a girl who told the story about a time her grand champion lamb had been auctioned. The prices began to get so high during the bidding, she wrote, that I started to cry from happiness. She continued, the man who bought the lamb for so much more than I ever dreamed I would get returned the lamb to me. And when I got home, daddy barbecued the lamb and it was really delicious. Human love isn't always what it seems and it's never enough. In today's edition of Life Notes, what is love? Human love isn't always what it seems, and it's never enough. Why is this? The American Heritage Dictionary defines love as an intense affection for another person based on familiar or personal ties. Human love is conditional and unpredictable because we love based on feelings and emotions that can change from one moment to the next. In error and to our detriment, we believe love is a human construct, and so we have humanized love and narrowed it to short-lived feelings and emotions. And in the end, we have distorted and defamed the most precious gift in the universe, love. As a gift to the universe, I believe love to be two things. One, Love is the truth. It is the law. It is the code, the moral rule that governs, protects, and sustains the entire universe. And secondly, the creator is the embodiment and source of love. For the universe is the creator's love actualized in material form. We often think of love as an emotion and Although love is most definitely experienced emotionally, love is not an emotion. Because love is not dependent on feelings and emotions, but rather love functions despite feelings and emotions. Because love is the moral rule that governs actions, thoughts, and behavior. Because love is founded on divine character, not our own. When I do not feel like loving, when I'm enticed to anger, to impatience, to seek my own, to believe the worst, or to just simply give up, love denies these feelings. And instead, love causes me to rejoice, to to live in humility, in, in humbling myself, in holding and serving others. That is love. And it does not disappear if that love is never reciprocated, for love doesn't weaken. Because love, as I said before, is the principle, the truth, the law, the the code, the moral rule that governs. And although it isn't derived from us, it is supernaturally stirred within us. Love is an act of the will. It is a commitment we grow into, for we grow in love. Love is a divine commitment that we grow into. I've got three questions for you. Do you love yourself? What governs your way of being? What commitments are you going to make to love today? I leave you with these words from Ty Gibson. You were born to love without fight, 
to kiss without slight, to laugh and not cry, to breathe and not sigh, to dance and not fall, to run and not crawl, to feel without remorse, to obey without force, to smile without strain, and to sing without pain, to live and not die, and forever freely fly. Thank <laughs> you.